Hello everyone, and welcome to the Bungie reveal stream for Season of the Arrival, Season of Arrivals, something like that, and also, we believe, the Fall expansion. I am very excited, I am a huge Destiny fan, been playing it since the original beta for D1, and this is basically what they've been building up to for seven years, is the arrival of the darkness. I'm the Destiny 2 uh, general manager. I'm Luke Smith, and I'm the Destiny 2 game director. So I'm very excited to see to what they're today, showing off here. We to just acknowledge the circumstances and the unprecedented times we're in. Um, this is not how we had planned this several months ago uh, to talk about the future of Destiny 2 and, and, and reveal where we're headed with, with the team. Um, you know, the, this shows not how we planned it. We're building the game, not how we planned it, from our living rooms and, you know, basements and with our kids and our dogs and all sorts of stuff on our laps well, must be a very uh, different well, way of working for them at yeah, the moment the, uh this is just, there's like a there's like an inherent weirdness to this even the weirdness of you know this is the first time i've seen you in person for in the last like probably three months and i don't know if people <laughs> know but outside of the show that is work like those are actually pretty close like we hang out we talk all the time our our significant others are buddies like uh and so yeah, this is it's like it's super weird just to see you in person. Yeah, not on yeah. a screen. Yeah, not on yeah. this little like zoom screen on an iPad or something. Like it's just it's just totally bizarre. Yeah. Um, this is not how we envisioned this and certainly our hope was that it would be more than just us two talking about this stuff. Um, and over the course of the summer we'll a bunch more folks from the team are gonna are gonna talk about what we're what we're up to and what we're gonna be up to. Okay. We get we get that the virus is a thing. Let's let's get into it now. <laughs> well I guess they kind of have to say that at the start because you know, it is a weird situation. Right. Here we go. Apparently we might be going to Europa for the first time. That is in the path of the darkness ships that have been approaching all through the last season. There has been a visual of the ships getting closer and closer to, toward us. I think this is Eris. I am so excited, man. Seven years of build-up. They were one. They were originally supposed to be in Destiny One. There is concept art for five races, and four of them made it into the game. And the fifth one, the concept art is there, but they never were in the game. That was the Darkness race. Now, seven years later, it appears as though we may be actually going to finally get them. I I pray to God it's not another sort of reskin race, like the Frozen Hive or the Scorn or SIVA enemies. If you if you know the games, you know what I'm talking about. There have been times when they've gone like, hey, we've got new races, and they're not really new races. They're pretty much reskinned old ones. So I'm really hoping that for the expansion, probably not in the upcoming season. I imagine the upcoming season will be mostly building up toward the arrival of the actual darkness, but... Is that this is what I brought you here to see. Is that the Exo Stranger? Is that the freaking Exo Stranger? Surely not. Beyond light. Surely not. Have they actually brought the Exo Stranger back? After all that time and all those so, memes? Uh, Luke, is it finally time to explain? <laughs> You know, listen, like oh some my God, it is. said that the Sometimes with the Stranger finally time story. to explain. And as you get back into Destiny and you keep like looking around and finding stones to uncover, a character who says that she's not forged in light and where the two of you meet, ground can break, becomes a pretty interesting tool to, to leverage here in uh, Destiny 2 Beyond Light and going forward. You know, oh, the man. Of a brand new era in Destiny. For those who don't know, the Exo this Stranger was a meme character, character a brand new who left you in and Destiny 1 saying, the first I don't even have time to explain why I don't have time to began. explain. This is the birthplace of the Exo and the site of a newly active pyramid ship. As a player, you're going to face Aramis, a fallen warrior wielding a brand new power born from a very ancient darkness. Like you, 
Aramis is a leader, but unlike you, she seeks revenge against the Traveler for scattering her people's once great houses to the cosmic winds. It's up to you to confront Aramis and her growing empire on the frozen battlegrounds of Europa. And it's up to you to go beyond and discover long dormant secrets hidden beneath the surface in places lost to time, like... The Deep Snow Crypt. Yes, there you go. That one I Lower heard corner. of. That one I yeah. heard of, yeah. Doing it. There's a lot more to Europa than you might imagine. And here's your first look at gameplay from Destiny 2 Beyond Life. Where I come from, the darkness won. I have witnessed this firsthand. I refuse to let it happen again. It's time the truth presented itself to you. Darkness resides within, beckoning you. This is a truth we cannot hide from, and so we must embrace it. The line between light and dark is so very thin. Let's cross it together. Oh boy, new darkness subclasses. Man. I will give these guardians the destruction they crave. Okay, I mean, the idea of darkness subclasses is very cool. However, I'm looking at that and I'm not Maybe seeing time to wield the darkness a new darkness way. race. Destiny 2 Beyond Light ships to all currently supported platforms on September 22nd this year. And it kicks off a new era in Destiny where players will discover the true nature of the light and the dark. Not just walking the thin line between, but wielding the darkness itself as a weapon with stasis. And we did just get like a very brief look at that today. And, you know, obviously we're gonna end up showing more throughout the course of the summer. And the other thing is stasis, this new power, isn't just gonna be guardian supers and abilities. It's a brand new damage type. So that means it's gonna ultimately sit alongside solar, arc, and void as the first new element we've introduced to the game since the original Destiny release way back in 2014. This is a big deal. Like. It's a big deal to add this to the universe. Like it changes everything. And it's a lot of work. <laughs> <laughs> Today, yeah, you got a glimpse of this this new power, and it's it's definitely the pursuit and acquisition and, and the player's ability to wield it. It's something that's going to be woven in through the narrative of the game. Like the game is kind of a collision course between you and and Aramis, and uh, we're going to show you a bunch more about Stasis later in the year. Because though we're excited about what we're delivering this fall, we did say that Destiny 2: Beyond Light was the beginning of a new era. What does that mean? Well, it, it means that we're thinking about destiny beyond just any given year and thinking about it over time. And so we want to take a look into kind of the long future of destiny. But when you want to look ahead, like we're about to do, it all starts back at the beginning. I'm kind of worried that they're not actually going to be living up to people's expectations here. It seems because surely they would have shown if this was the big invasion, surely they would have shown a lot of ships there we and the new race the traveler but they didn't and its arrival changed us forever but we've seen the ships are like there's tons and tons of ships on their way here Guardian. and they're like at jupiter right now you must push back so surely the, the invasion must be about to happen guardians are fighting on earth and beyond join them that was the exo stranger there in d1 into the pit. In the end, they all. Oh, Crota's end. That was so much fun. It gets we a lot of flack, but I loved Crota's end. We have murdered his son. Taken King, obviously the best the Taken King of D1. Comes for us all. Taken King was phenomenal. Indestructible. 
I'm not sure what the purpose is of them going back through all this. You're not brave. You've merely forgotten the fear of death. I am Gaul. And your light is mine. Without the light, are we even guardians anymore? Oh, Forsaken. Forsaken for me was the pinnacle this of Destiny, the franchise. Any last words? I'm coming home. Yes. Man, Sorry, that scene was brutal. This is to be a reckoning. Shadow Keep, of course, last year. The first reveal of the pyramid ship. I'm really worried. The fact that they only showed a single pyramid ship on uh, Europa there. I really hope they're not just going to rehash Shadow Keep and delay the actual arrival for another year. But I just, I don't think they can. And the fact that this season is called Season of Arrivals, it must be. Salvation. It must be about to occur, but they're not showing it. Light and dark is. So very thin. Surely, <laughs> surely, they can't delay it any further when they're. Do you know which side you're on. They're pretty much here. Okay, 2021, the Witch Queen. A side should always be taken. 20, oh my god, they're really looking to the future. It's the wrong side. 2022 Lightfall? Is, are they seriously... We're building Destiny's future today, right inside of Destiny 2. It starts with Beyond Light coming this fall. It's oh, going to continue with the next major expansion, The Witch Queen, and Lightfall is going to kind of drive this all to a, uh, to a moment. These three releases represent this new era in Destiny. These eras began really in 2014 with that era of light where, you know, players entered Surely they're not the delaying time. the full darkness invasion until 2022. The they learned about Surely the, not. the things the children were scared of. And, the Witch know, Queen is probably Sabathun. Era, uh, when we've we taken down Crota, we've taken down Oryx. Coming out of an era of loss. Of our Sabathun powers, is the next one on our, our, on our hit list. And soon we will be entering an era of darkness. And if it's not clear, we are all in. On Destiny 2. Last year, Com confirmation there's no Destiny 3 then. We wanted to build the definitive action MMO, place it in an awesome evolving world that you can play anytime, anywhere with your friends. We are still completely committed to this ambitious vision, and we're going to continue reaching to deliver it in Destiny 2. And to be clear, listen, I'm sure like over here in the Twitch chat, there's like, you know, some mix of salt and space dad. You know, we haven't gotten everything right out of the gate. You know, for example, we've already begun working on changes that we're going to make to our seasonal model in year four to get a bunch of the FOMO that's in the game right now out of it. And this is a response not only to your feedback, but just, you know, we took it in the wrong direction. You can, you can lay that at me. We're also working on things like transmog, and that's going to be an experience that means armor is kind of always valuable to you because it can always represent a look for you to chase. And we've got a bunch of other improvements to the experience that we're working on. Things like the quest lock's going to get like another awesome revision. We've got like small touches. <laughs> like, like, another awesome one. revision. I, I think when we started yeah, Beyond that's Light, that's a good one. Uh, this was one that uh, I that is a very, in, very tongue-in-cheek uh, joke. Yeah, getting because it has been revised so many times, and everyone hates the light, it every the time. The heat of the title screen doesn't light up your entire apartment at 2 a.m. So there are the small features, but then there's also some big features and maybe one of the biggest is next generation support i think one of the most exciting things we're going to talk about is the game's going to run at 60 frames per second and 4k resolution on the new hardware we're also really happy to say that whatever content you already own or will own in destiny 2 will come with you to your next generation console of choice at no extra charge on playstation 
you'll be able to upgrade to PlayStation 5 for free. And on Xbox, we will support smart delivery also for free. In plain English, this means if you own Destiny 2 expansion content on those platforms now or in the future or by Beyond Light in September, you can keep playing on the same family consoles for free without buying the expansions again. Good. We I mean, they had to do that. I mean, the amount of backlash they would have got if that right wasn't true we're going to support would be insane. Generational crossplay within each console platform ecosystem as well. This means that if your your brother's playing on PS4 and your sister's playing on PS5, all three of you can play together. And we're going to do the same thing in the Xbox ecosystem. This year we're focused on intergenerational play. Hopefully next year we can finally do the thing and get them all playing together in the same ecosystem. Cross yes. play across all so platforms would be cool, so and good. Shadow Keep brought back the moon and upgraded and enhanced it. And so we we brought a destination out of the vault and you know spruced it up and that's where you got to play. We're not doing that with this fall's destination, Europa. It's a brand new place you've never been before. And both the Witch Queen and Lightfall are going to also include brand new, never before seen destinations. These expansions will stretch out across a timeline that's gonna bring much anticipated enemies to the forefront and hopefully deliver some twists, turns, drama that uh, we don't think anyone's gonna see coming. But to deliver these big content beats each and every year, and keep building on top of our seasonal experiences while making technological leaps forward, we also need to make some big changes to the way we treat some of our older legacy content. The stuff that maybe is getting a little long in the tooth that you're not really looking at and playing anymore. You're like, not- De Destiny, <laughs> Destiny 2 is a huge game. We have nine destinations, 40 story missions, 54 adventures, 42 lost sectors, 17 strikes, 31 PVP maps, seven raids, and hundreds of game systems that layer on top of that. I could go on, and I probably screwed up one of those numbers. The fact is, the game is too large to efficiently update and maintain. We're on track to be like 115 gigabytes on PlayStation alone, and our updates to the game are huge, and we're starting to reach the limits of our ability to patch. We don't want to start off from, from scratch and build a sequel. And in order to make a sequel, we would have to stop supporting Destiny 2. Like, it would effectively go dark. You know, we talk about a single evolving world. A single evolving world. Not multiple evolving worlds, <laughs> but a single evolving world. And we don't want people to have to start over. We don't want to have that loss of continuity with our game systems and our communities and all the players together. We don't want to put another number on the box. So instead, here's our plan. This is interesting. Each year, just as a new expansion comes out, we're going to cycle older less actively played activity and destination content out of the live game and into what we're calling the Destiny Content Vault, the DCV. <laughs> Moving content into this vault is gonna allow us to add support for D2 for years, including Beyond Light, the Witch Queen. So I feel like I'm not reacting vault. enough to this, but this I'm finding it very interesting. I'm concentrating on it. Take content from Destiny 1. They've been talking about doing high, this for a while. Ready to come back into the Destiny 2 ecosystem. So we're not just going to be taking stuff away. We're also going to be going into those the classic vaults and kind of bringing some stuff back or unvaulting. I can almost guarantee they'll bring the Dreadnought back Thinking with the about Witch the Queen. Greatest hits of Destiny, right? Like, what's what are the new tracks we can lay down? What's something from the past that was like pretty cool that could be made even better if it existed today? And what, is, what does that look like? Yeah, there's a lot of stuff that people, there's a lot of awesome stuff that the team has built over the you know six years of six years of making Destiny and that Destiny 2 players totally have missed out on. Like later this year, Destiny 1's Cosmodrome is coming back this fall as a selectable destination. It's three oh, strikes snap. are also gonna come back during season 12 and season 13. And part of the awesome- They just dropped that as a, a bunch of players have a side note. Sex. Sepix was the strike from the beta way back in like summer 2014. It is the like the oldest, like the definitive, most... the definitive like original strike that yeah. we felt like hit the right notes. Yeah, like, in Destiny One, yeah. right? And yeah. we left all that behind when we made Destiny Two, and we're saying like we don't want to do that again. Well, let's not do that again, but let's also reach into the past and like bring it into the present. But there's a lot of great content in our past, and. Maybe this year we'll see a, a classic raid come back. I think it'd be pretty amazing this year to see the Vault of Glass kind of unvaulted and returned in front of players. Like I can imagine things like champion Praetorians instead of just regular Praetorians and kind of updating it slightly to the modern context, uh, but still preserving that like classic Interesting. Feel. This fall when the expansion comes out, not only are we gonna be bringing back Cosmodrome and adding Europa, but we're gonna look at some of that content that's been in the game for a long time, that's been free, 
that isn't actively played, and that's, that's when some of that is going to be vaulted. Well, after the show, we're going to have a much more in-depth article that you can read on our plans for, for vaulting content on Bungie.net and why we're taking this unprecedented approach and what it means for the game this year and for the game going forward. We're also going to be conducting a bunch of interviews to answer your big questions, and we will continue the conversation with coverage in our ongoing This Week at Bungie community conversations, as well as there will be a bunch of player support and DPS articles about this all summer long. You know, we've, we've placed a bunch of bets on the Destiny Cosmic board, whether it's the Traveler waking up, whether it's the Stranger dissolving after telling you, you know, there's, there's so much more to explore out there. And so... We're going to start to bring a bunch of these threads home. And here's a look at the beginning of those threads coming home to roost this summer in Season of Arrivals. So this is the... Okay, Season of Arrivals, this is what starts today. The Almighty just blew up the in the Almighty first live event. The Almighty smoldering ash. And with allies like Rasputin, who can stop us? Okay, so they are here. Okay, good. Good. Thank From you. From Titan to Mercury, their shadow reaches. Is their message a warning? A trick? Thank you, God. We can't know until we hear their words for ourselves. Oh, I feel so much better now. You will not need them. We offer only truth. The darkness reached out, but something interferes. The witch sister of the Taken King, Savathun. Yes, Savathun. God, I cannot wait for Savathun. We are the final line that halts the second collapse. Yourself, Guardian, this battle is not over. Okay, okay. Cautiously optimistic, because if they're arriving, so that's the season of arrival. If they're arriving in this season, then they must be fully here <laughs> in so today, the expansion, <laughs> right? Even though it didn't we really show it, the Destiny content vault. Surely, we looked into the past to see kind of how we got to where we are today. We looked into the far future with the Witch Queen and Lightfall. And we also talked about Beyond Light, which is the beginning of a new era in Destiny 2. And if pre-ordering is kind of your thing, like the pre-orders are going to go live today. Like if you're, if you're interested, there's some, there's some sweet bonuses. And, uh, you know, that's, that's kind of the, the summary of the show. Uh, we're and you're, if you're excited about the start of Beyond Light and where we're headed, well, the season arrivals, we just, it's kind of like a prelude. You know, it's, it's really setting up that story, and so we encourage you to get in and play. There's one more thing I totally forgot. Uh, so, today, at 5 p.m. Pacific, we're going to launch a brand new dungeon called Prophecy. Wow, that's Prophecy a big a thing to drop. That involves the Nine, and that's kind of like all I'm going to say about it, because there's, there's a little bit of business uh, to get to with it, and then uh, we'll... we'll Datto is going to lose his mind at that. But, it's got a brand new set of armor for you to chase. It's got some, some classic armor for you to chase. It's going to be at a really high power level, which means it's like a, a solid day's work plus a little bit of skill to, to summit that mountain. It's free for all players. It's free for all players. And we're going to show you a trailer in just a second. If you don't want to see anything from the dungeon, just click the little red X or like get up and go have a, make an omelet and then come back and the stream will be over and you can play, uh, you can play Season of Arrivals in Destiny 2. That's a that's fucking good note to end on. Yeah, like, oh, yeah, I still have so many questions yeah, about the expansion, it's though. Time to say thank you all for tuning in and giving us your time today. And just this was a lot bigger picture than I expected this from this stream. Community. I thought they were going to go in on the expansion, and it was a little bit of the expansion, a little bit of the upcoming season, but also in-depth changes coming over the next three years. Oh, man.
Okay, this looks awesome. I cannot wait to have a go at that. Oh, don't you dare. Okay. Okay, <laughs> that looks very cool. That's a good mic drop to end on. That is a good mic drop to end on. Is that the end of the stream then? Are we, are we done? Seems like we're done. Oh man, okay. I am so confused about the whole darkness stuff then. Because that... The Beyond Light trailer at the start made it really seem like there was just going to be one ship the same as there was in Shadowkeep. And I felt pretty disappointed when I thought that was what they were saying. But then, they've shown that in this coming season, the ships are arriving. So, how can they... Uh, it must be bigger than they are letting on, basically. And then they're detailing the next couple of years. So Beyond Light will be this expansion. The Witch Queen counterpart to the Taken King will be 2021 expansion and then Lightfall 2022 expansion will be the culmination of everything so that you would assume would be the ultimate light versus dark battle but then how are they going to deal with the darkness already arriving now if it's not the ultimate battle for another two years oh let's let's just give it a give it a pause there in case that's overpowering my voice that, oh, there's so much to think about. And then what they were talking about, cycling out old content. It's like, how much are they going to cycle out? Because are they going to cycle out main story missions? Are they going to cycle out the Red War? Because nobody plays the Red War anymore, apart from if you're a new player and you get into the game and you want to play through the main campaign. If the, first, if the opening of the main campaign just isn't there anymore, then that's kind of a hard situation to get new players into the game if they just can't play that content. So does it mean like older strikes, but then... Having so many strikes is very good when you're running the strike playlist. It gr greatly increases the variety if you're not getting the same five over and over again. So are they getting rid of old PvP maps? That's the same issue as the strikes for people who play PvP. I'm not a PvP person really, but for those people that would be annoying. So I'm curious what content... I mean, they said they're going to release that article, which I'll have to have a read of, uh, detailing more about it. I'm very curious what they're going to be removing. But uh, they're also going to be bringing old stuff back in. Vault of Glass this year. That is, That was such an awesome experience. The first Destiny 1 raid. That was just... Oh, I've got such fond memories of that. I'll definitely be replaying that. Uh, whether or not this will all be on YouTube, I'm not sure. Because so much is coming out in September. I feel like I may end up doing this in my own time. Because it's a harder game to record. Because there's a lot of like grinding sometimes. Or replaying the same content to level up and stuff so it's it's it is a harder one to record but um i i'm very excited i'm very excited and we will have to see what more gets revealed as we go forward because there is still a lot that we don't know a fucking lot like the stuff they actually showed about beyond light oh. hello dr lupo can we can we not start jumping channels that'd be great thank you um the, yeah, they're, like, they didn't actually show shit, really, for Beyond Light. They showed Europa, they showed uh, Drifter, Eris, and Exo Stranger meeting up in front of that ship, and they showed that we're getting Darkness subclasses. And that's kind of it. So, there's still so much we don't know. But uh, I'm eager to see what comes next. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. I feel like I didn't actually react as much to that as I was expecting to because there was a hell of a lot more talking between the two guys than I was expecting, but uh, hope you found it interesting. If you did watch to the end, thank you very much, and I will see you next time for whatever else we'll be reacting to. PS5 reveal in two days' time. That's what will be the next reaction video. Excited for that too. Thanks again, and I will see you next time.